The following is the gut-wrenching true story of a man dismembered alive by an alligator while looking for frisbees to sell in Taylor Lake, Florida. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying alligator attack on Sean McGinnis. Welcome to Final Affliction. On May 31st, 2022, 47-year-old Sean McGinnis dived into the water at the lake in Largo, Florida beside a disc golf club looking for lost frisbees. He was homeless and had made a living by retrieving discs and selling them back to players at the park. Sean had been living in a friend's basement for eight years, but was now asked to find a proper job and leave by January due to the conflicts with his roommate's family arising from his presence. The pressure compounded by his dire circumstance made him take the risk of venturing deeper and farther into the lake looking for lost discs to resell. He had been successful in avoiding authorities so far by going into the water in the dark of night when the park was closed. He would sometimes pull 30 discs from the water in one night, reselling them for 5 or $10 a piece which would help him scrape a living for a few more days. According to Sean's friend, he was aware of the no swimming signs put up near the lakeshore, but displayed a callousness to the warning and was more concerned about his immediate financial needs. He was also becoming increasingly ill and was diagnosed with a malignant tumor that he knew would shorten his life anyway. Unbeknownst to him, the lake was home to hundreds of American alligators residing in the deeper water that rarely surfaced or splashed in the water enough for anyone to notice. These marine reptiles are the apex predators of the waters in Florida and can weigh more than 600 pounds and be over 4 meters long from head to tail. They usually hunt small fish beneath the water and rarely come out to catch mammals or birds that come close enough to the shore. The American alligator has over 80 conical teeth but their bite is not strong enough to rip through flesh or chew on large animals. They instead grab their prey and spin in the water to tear larger animals into pieces before swallowing these parts whole. On that fateful Tuesday morning at around 4 a.m., Sean dipped his toes into the cold water and took steady steps further ahead. The lake was shallow at the shore but dropped significantly just a few feet in. It was dark and silent all around as he flailed his hands beneath the water hoping to hit a disc. He had done this several times before, but the sight of the vast, deep water alone at midnight was still enough to make him feel eerie and uneasy. City lights lit the distance several kilometers away, and the park was expected to be empty for several hours till it opened at 9 a.m. Sean was only feet deep in the water when he found his first disc. It was damaged, but was enough to fetch a few dollars. He threw it to the shore and went back looking for more. He quickly realized that he had exhausted what he could hope to find in these shallow waters and would have to move further into the lake. In just a few minutes, he found himself chest deep in the lake searching for lost frisbees. Anything he salvaged, he threw back to the shore where he was collecting them. Desperation, compounded by the urgency of time before daylight, forced him to venture deeper into the lake than he had ever been before. But Sean was hopelessly ignorant of the deadly trap he had just walked into. At around 4.30 in the morning, he heard a light splash in the distance. In the dark, empty night in the middle of the water, he was startled to hear a sound from anything that wasn't him. He looked into the distance, anticipating a guard or park ranger, but then he heard the splash again, this time much closer and right in front of him. He noticed a set of glowing eyes surface from the water, peering at him. He finally realized the predicament he was in, as a shiver of terror ran down his spine. Caught in the middle of the lake, helpless and alone, Sean screamed for help, but the shore was still several meters away, and he was caught helpless on the alligator's turf. The animals swam up in front of Sean, stopping him dead in his tracks. He looked back and noticed another set of eyes among the dark background of the lake. He found himself alone, frightened and cornered. A large snout surfaced from behind him and snapped shut with his thigh in its tight grip. He let out a scream in agony as the animal's teeth crushed his bones and tore through his flesh. No amount of kicking and screaming seemed to throw the alligator off. It then started to spin in the water with Sean's leg firmly in its jaws and ripped off his right leg. Sean screamed in intense pain and struggled forward with all his might, stumbling toward the shore with the weight of the water crashing against him. 
left bleeding and unable to walk, his fate was now all but sealed. The second alligator came up in front of him, biting down on his right arm and ripping it off in the same gruesome fashion. He had lost two limbs, but the adrenaline and shock prevented him from slipping away into unconsciousness. He lay there in the water splashing and struggling to stay afloat as the reptilian predators circled around him in a cynical fashion. The commotion attracted more alligators, and the attack turned into a feeding frenzy for the predators. One after another, the animals bit down on his body and his limbs. Sean was mercilessly mauled to pieces, losing three limbs before he finally succumbed to his devastating injuries and died. The limbs of the dead man satiated the animals for a while and his body floated on the water in a blood reddened spot on the lake. His mangled and bloody torso with only one leg attached was discovered four hours later by a man walking his dog near the park. His face was completely mauled and it became difficult to identify him when no one came out to claim his body for several hours after the incident. It was only the next day that his identity was finally uncovered using dental evidence and his roommate was made aware of his friend's death. It was the first fatal alligator attack in the state since 2019 and news of his tragic demise sent shockwaves across the country. Police investigations questioned the lapse in security at the park despite an earlier incident in 2020 of a man bitten by alligators while retrieving lost items from the lake. It was later discovered that Sean had been strictly warned not to enter the lake after he had been discovered by security a few months prior. Unfortunately, instead of heeding the warnings, he decided to carry on when the park was closed at night. Researchers of reptile behavior claimed that this brutal death was the result of a chain of consequences. It was the alligator's mating season in Florida, which meant the animals were more guarding of their territory and saw anything foreign in the water as a potential threat. The dark of night also made it more likely for them to swim closer to the shore, increasing chances of encounters with humans who would sometimes come close to the lake shore to enjoy the view of the water. The following night, authorities and trappers were dispatched to the area to locate the alligators that had killed Sean McGinnis. Two of them were euthanized after being found swimming close to where his body had been retrieved. The alligators measured over 10 feet and were transported to a nearby sanctuary. They were cut open in hopes of finding Sean's arm and legs so that they could be buried alongside him. Unfortunately, nothing could be salvaged from the abdomens of the reptiles except a few pieces of bone and cloth. Sean's roommate expressed immense regret and remorse at having asked him to leave and could not help but blame himself for the tragic turn of events that had led to Sean's brutal death. The Largo Police Department closed down the park for several days and tightened security around the lake to stop people from going in to look for lost items. There was no one to grieve for his demise apart from a few friends that he knew. He had no family in Florida and had no contact with distant relatives in over eight years. But for Sean, his death served as a reminder against venturing too close to vicious predators of this kind and shocked parkgoers into complying with the rules and regulations around the lake, fearful that they too would meet their unfortunate final affliction.